Today's topic will be Driving Market Transformation in Forest Products, Part 1, presented by Jason Medic, Director of Marketing and Sustainable Forest Initiative, or SFI. Our speaker today, Jason, holds a Bachelor of Science in Forestry from Northern Arizona University and is a member of the Society of American Foresters. He also sits on a number of committees related to certification, labeling and claims, including the Program for Endorsement of Forest Certifications in a Custody Committee, the Center for Resource Solutions Purchases Advisory Committee, is a member of Walmart's Sustainable Value Network for Wood and Paper Products, and chairs the ASTM Task Group on Chain of Custody. This session is part one of two discussions in certifi Certified Forest Products. Next month, Corey Brickenmar of Forest Stewardship Council, or FSC, will present his views on certified wood products. As most group members know, the 2012 fourth public comment recognizes only FSC and approved USGBC equivalents. Uh, that uh, remains to be seen what that means. We hope to start a dialogue of why if these two certification systems are similar, this is the case, and learn about the main attributes of each. Jason will now take the mic. Great. Thanks, Richard. I really appreciate um, being invited today uh, to present um, on the Sustainable Forestry Initiative. And, and what I really want to do today is, um, is, is kind of just go over what the Sustainable Forestry Initiative program is, SFI, what, what we're about. There's been a lot of changes with SFI over the last uh, few years, and um, it's possible you have some some preconceived notions of, of what SFI may have been in the past, and, and hopefully I can help clear up uh, where we are today and where we're moving towards in the future. Um, I also want to quickly um, go over some green building um, information with you as well, because that's really what the major drive for forest certification in the solid wood um, uh, industry ha has been for, for forest certification. It's really these green building rating tools that are out there. And I'm going to discuss a little bit um, about uh, the, just the climate and, and green building tools out there that, that recognize SFI as well as um, ones that, that currently don't um, like, uh, like USGBC's lead rating tools. And so with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. And Rob, I believe I can just um, go to the next slide, or is there a way to, uh, to um, make this full screen? Yeah, that's correct. If you, it actually, from our view, is a full screen right now. Um, if you okay, just want to then. advance the slide, you could go to slideshow or just however you, you're more comfortable. Sure. Mm -hmm. That looks okay. perfect. All right. Well, thanks. And so, let's just start at the very basic level on, on what forest certification is. Um, I, I don't know the familiarity of folks on the phone and, and your level of, of, what, of what this really movement over the last 17 years ha has been about, but it really started in, in the early 90s, mid-90s, as a way for large buyers of wood-based products to get assurances that the products they were buying they weren't coming from illegally logged areas. They weren't coming from from areas w with with high concentrations of, of biodiversity. That that all these environmental issues were, were really being looked after um, uh, and, and and reviewed carefully um, before products were being sold in in the global marketplace. And so um, it, it really was this this proof point um, uh, for those buyers to get those assurances so that they could tell their stakeholders, their customers, the consumers out there that the wood products, the paper products that, that you're buying are coming from these well-managed forests. What started in, in the mid-90s, and, and it really started um, uh, through the Forest Stewardship Council. I understand Corey is going to be on the line next week or in a few weeks to discuss FSC, but it really started in, in developing countries um, uh, as, as this proof point in the international arena. It wasn't until about the late 90s that, that it really took yeah. hold in, in the United States, these concepts of forest certification. And it really started um, early on with, with major retailers, retailers like the Home Depot, that created these purchasing policies that basically said, we're not going to buy your product unless you can verify that it's through this third-party certification standard, such as an SFI-type system or an FSC-type system. And really, since then, we've seen 
the the purchasing policies drive market decisions and, and, and the market acceptance of these certification standards. We've also seen governments play a role in forest certification. The, uh, the, the UK um, has created a purchasing policy for, for any wood or paper products that enter their country, and they have specific measures on, on how they view forest certification. Um, and we've also seen, uh, and I'll speak about this later on, standards out there and tools out there um, uh, for designers and architects and, 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 and others in, in this field to, to, uh, to have this checklist of, of requirements and then they get some sort of certification or some sort of approval and forest certification plays a role within those standards and those uh, rating tools as well. Here's a slide I, I like to show, and, and there are multiple forest certification standards out there. Um, it is an acronym, it is an alphabet soup game at times on these different forest certification standards. I'm, I represent the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, SFI. You'll hear from Forest Stewardship Council, FSC. But there's also other programs out there, like the Canadian Standards Association, which operates in Canada, or the American Tree Farm System, which is really designed for small family forest landowners in the U.S. And then there's also a program called the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification, or PEFC. And they, like FSC, operate on a global um, level. PEFC and FSC are very similar in their approach, where PEFC and FSC are both umbrella organizations, and then what they do is they endorse regional or national standards under their umbrella organization. And so within the FSC world, about 25, 26 different standards have been endorsed all throughout the world. Within PEFC, around that same amount, 25, 26 different standards um, across the world under the PEFC model. It's important to note that the Sustainable Forestry Initiative the Canadian Standards Association and the American Tree Farm System are all endorsed under the PEFC umbrella organization. Jason, I have a quick question. Did your yes. son did your son create that uh, alphabet soup? <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, whichever designer did had a fun time doing it. <laughs> um, so if you look globally at at four certification, giving you the the, the flavor of, of the different certification standards that, that operate globally, only 10% of the world's forests are certified under any of these forest certification standards. And so when people start talking about who's the A-plus standard, who's the A-minus standard, this rating tool recognizes one system, this one doesn't recognize another system, by cutting off all these credible systems, People aren't looking at the bigger picture, which is only 10% of the world's forests are certified under any of these standards. And really the goal should be, how can we ensure more lands are certified uh, responsibly, more, more lands are, are being managed responsibly under these, uh, under these standards and, and objectives. And so it's important uh, to keep that, that bigger picture in mind at, at times when, when looking at these large issues. If you look here in, um, in North America, uh, the, the major programs that, that operate, FSC operates both in the U.S. and Canada. American Tree Farm System is just in the U.S. Canadian Standards Association is just in, um, in Canada. And then SFI is both in the U.S. and Canada. Um, about 71% of all certified lands are to other systems other than FSC. And so this, again, is a, is a very important point for or when you look at, at those rating tools out there that don't recognize the value of all these credible systems, they're not recognizing the value of 71% of certified lands out there in the marketplace. And so um, by recognizing um, all these credible systems, uh, it, it really does give more value to these concepts of forest certification.
One of the key questions I, I seem to get time and time again, and, and a lot of this stems from the history of how the Sustainable Forestry Initiative was originally um, uh, uh, formulated. It, it, it came out of um, the, the interests of the um, Forest and Products Trade um, Industry Group, the American Forest and Paper Association, but it's been independent now for, for well over um, uh, seven years. And so. Um, when when people talk about the independence oh, of oh, I don't have it. It's collapsed. Oh, hello. Okay. Uh, when, when people talk about the independence of SFI, I like to show this slide because this really shows who the board of directors are, the interests groups that they represent um, within uh, within our, our stakeholders. This is the group that oversees all aspects of the SFI program. So we have six members from the environmental sector, um, groups like the Conservation Fund, Bird Studies Canada, Resources for the Future, Management Center for Conservation Sciences, which happens to also sit on FSC's board of directors. We also have social sector groups, um, someone from a uh, labor organization, Bill Street. We have the CEO of Habitat for Humanity in Canada. We have state foresters. We have academic. We have um, a, a other um, uh, um, interest groups as well. Um, in the economic sector, again, we have um, SFI program participants that, that represent the economic sector. So it's this true three um, chamber board of directors that represents environmental, social, and economic interest groups um, uh, um, uh, consistently. Looking now specifically just at SFI stats, and you'll see that um, we have 60 million acres of lands that are third-party certified under SFI's forest management standard in the United States. We have an additional 136 million acres of forest lands that are certified um, to the forest uh, management standard in, in Canada. And the big reason for, for the, the discrepancy in 60 million versus 136 million is just landowner patterns. In Canada, the majority of the forest land is owned and controlled by the Canadian government. And they lease those lands out to timber industry, who then manage those lands on behalf of the Crown government. So you have these large tracts, 20 million acres at a time, um, of these lands that, that go through the certification process. The landowner patterns here in the U.S. are significantly different. The majority of the forest lands in the U.S., they're not owned by industry. They're not um, uh, run by industry. They're not managed by industry. They're managed by small family forest landowners who may harvest their lands once in a generation. SFI, when we were developed early on, we understood that this was a, a, a key issue here in the U.S. How can we ensure that, that not only the lands that are under SFI's control, that 60 million acres that are being certified um, to the SFI Forest Management Center, but how can we ensure that additional fiber that may enter the supply chain is still being managed in a responsible way? And so we did that through our responsible sourcing um, objectives. Um, sorry, Rob, it's not uh, advancing for me on my end. There we go, got it. So we did that through our responsible sourcing objectives. Like I said, 60% of the fiber in the U.S. comes from these small family forest landowners. About 30% of the fiber in eastern Canada comes from these small woodlots. So while we're doing great things on that <coughs> 60 million acres of certified land, how can we ensure that the other fiber entering the supply chain is still being managed responsibly? And we built in these certified sourcing requirements. We built in requirements that the mill who may be sourcing from certified lands, but also non-certified lands, they have to educate that landowner about the benefits of sustainable forest management. Logger training, another key aspect within, um, within the supply chain. If you can ensure loggers out there are being trained in sustainable forestry attributes, that's the direct link between that small landowner and that mill they're delivering to. If that logger is out there looking for streamside buffer zones, if they're looking for threatened and endangered species, then they can indirectly make an impact on those lands um, that they're harvesting from so that you can be assured that that additional fiber is still coming from, from good operations. <clears throat> SFI also has a chain of custody um, standard. And all chain of custody 
is, when you really boil down to it, it's just an accounting system flow. It's understanding your supplier so that you can then pass on that claim, that statement that your supplier is passing on to you. So starting from the forest to those logs to that mill to that lumber that's being delivered to maybe a retailer or, or, or some other um, uh, end user, um, it's just following it all throughout the supply chain so that at the end of the day, if someone's wanting to make a claim about that specific product, then they can stand behind that claim through the chain of custody accounting system. Jason, I have a question about um, labeling. I know the FSC stamps their wood. Is there any labeling with SFI or they wrap the lumber in SFI label? Okay. How's that done? Yeah, there is um, on-product labels associated with SFI, and I actually have some slides later on that, that will speak okay. to that. If I don't get to that specific question, just re-ask it then, that's, Richard. That's fine. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, another common misperception of SFI besides our independence is that we don't have a third-party certification requirement within the SFI program. And, and that is, um, is, 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 again, false. SFI, in order to make any statement, in order to use any on-product label, that company must be third-party certified by an accredited certification body. Um, here's one certification body, NSF ISR, uh, Mike Ferrucci, who's a lead auditor, and he also does FSC audits as well, um, the, the, this specific auditor. But uh, I just thought this was a, a great quote um, from him that, that really shows the, the rigor of, um, of, of the SFI auditing process um, in, in ensuring that those companies that are getting certified are actually doing what they're saying they're doing, that, that these third-party audits give it the teeth, give it the credibility, um, so that those claims are backed up in the marketplace. See, it's being slow again. There we go. So what sets SFI apart? Um, SFI is the only certification program with a conservation research grant program, and, and I'll, uh, I'll speak to that in, in a little bit as well. Um, I also talked a, a little bit about um, all of those requirements within the SFI program um, on, on ensuring that, um, that, that our program participants invest in research dollars. So, so we know that, that we have the best available science today to make informed decisions in the future on how lands are being managed in a responsible way. I talked about the log returning program. We're the only um, certification standard that requires this of the logging community to ensure that they have been trained under sustainable forestry attributes. I talked about the outreach to landowners. And so, again, we're providing these, um, these proactive um, outreach efforts. We're not saying um, you shouldn't do this, you, you can't do that. Instead, we're, we're, we're trying to make it a difference on these additional forest lands by educating uh, landowners, by training loggers, by, by ensuring that we have the best available research today um, for future generations. Um, we also have what's called these SFI Implementation Committees, or SICs. And <clears throat> this is very unique to SFI. We have 37 different implementation committees spread across the U.S., and Canada, and it's really the grassroots program of the SFI. These are local program participants, um, other stakeholders from, from universities or environmental groups or labor organizations that, that really participate on a local level to show how SFI is being implemented um, on that local level. So <clears throat> what are SFI's top priorities? If you were speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, if you're in my office and, and we're sitting down for a cup of coffee, this is probably what, what I'd discuss with you. Um, SFI, we're, we're, we're looking at how we can grow certified land. I think that's very critical right now. I talked about that 10%, 90% message early on in the presentation. So what is SFI doing to, to look at how we can get more lands out there certified, um, more landowners a, a part of the sustainable forestry process. We have these community partnerships, which I'll talk about. Government relationships, as well, is, is key to us. Um, we've had statements from, from different um, um, uh, government organizations, like the USDA and Department of Education, that have come out and, and supported 
the concepts of, of all credible forest certification standards, including SFI and SSC. We have these conservation research grants, which I'll talk about as well. And then really proud customers. It's ensuring that customers are, are proud to support SFI, that end users know what SFI brings, the value that, that it brings, and, and, and not getting caught up in the rhetoric of, um, of, of who's the A-plus standard or who's the A-minus standard, but, but really looking at, at all these issues that, as positive developments to, to move the bar of responsible forest management. <clears throat> I talked about certified land growth, and, and this was a key objective of ours. Um, we had a pilot project um, that just concluded <clears throat> last year, um, and it was a two-year pilot project where we had a phase one and a phase two, and it really came to us through, um, through two large paper purchasers, Time, Inc. and Hearst um, uh, 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 Publishing as well. Obviously, large buyers of, of paper, um, and they had goals set for their own um, company on how much fiber in that paper was going to come from a certified forest. And they saw that that, that number um, was pretty stagnant at times. And so what they wanted to do was find opportunity to grow certified land. So they came to us with a, with the pilot project idea on, on, on looking at land specific to the state of Maine. We also partnered with a few other paper companies in Maine. And really what happened was about 1.5 million additional acres were third-party certified um, under these pilot projects. And the purpose is of these pilot projects was to show cost efficiencies, synergies um, around um, uh, uh, how you can reduce the cost of the audit for these smaller to medium-sized landowners. We've done a good job in, in capturing those large landowners, but how can we uh, make this affordable and cost-effective for those small landowners? This pilot project was such a huge success that we decided to hire a full-time person within SFI and really try to expand this sort of um, a project across the entire Southeast U.S., which we believe has the most opportunity um, to, to grow the certified land base. I also mentioned um, uh, community partnerships. We've been doing a lot with Habitat for Humanity over the last few years, where we've sponsored different build days, where um, uh, some of our certified uh, participants will donate materials to these um, builds, where we educate them about the benefits of, of using uh, products from sustainable forestry initiative um, companies. Um, we, we now have the, the president and CEO, Stuart Hardacre, um, uh, from Habitat Humanity Canada, who sits on our board of directors as well. We've also been partnering with uh, the Boy Scouts of America as well as Scouts Canada on different projects. And so, again, we're, we're looking outside of these typical partnerships to really show how, how we're, we're much more community-based and, and, and research-based uh, within our, our programs and our systems. I've mentioned a few times now our conservation grant program, and, and this has really given us a great opportunity to partner with some of the leading science-based conservation organizations that operate both in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, we started offering the, <coughs> these grants um, back in 2010 as a way to, to show uh, and, and to better understand how SFI certified organizations were partnering with these different conservation groups and different research-oriented, um, conservation-oriented um, projects. And um, it's been such a big success. We're, we're now in our third year. We're funding additional projects in 2012. Um, but, you know, whether it's partnering with a group like World Resources Institute to look at illegal logging issues um, <coughs> outside of... Uh, of the U.S. and Canada, or partnering with uh, Ducks Unlimited in Canada to see how the SFI standard can have a positive impact on duck habitat, or partnering with Audubon in New York to see how the SFI standard has a positive impact for bird habitat. And so this has really given us a great opportunity to really grow um, our research and really grow our, uh, our conservation support within the area of uh, forest sustainability. Another um, question I, I typically get is, um, FSC seems to be better on when addressing social issues. And, uh, and the big thing that they point to is, is, uh, is Aboriginal and First Nations support. Well, SFI, we, we are only 
um, available for landowners in the U.S. and Canada, and so we only certify forests in the U.S. and Canada. And in the U.S., um, law has has already given strong rights to aborigine to tribal land. Um, there are still some unsettled disputes in British Columbia, um, but what I can tell you is over five million acres of land has been certified under the SFI standard to Aboriginal or tribal land, making it the largest um, area of Aboriginal or tribal land certified to any certification standard operating in North America. And so we do have strong support from, um, from, uh, from these uh, um, First Nations and Aboriginal tribes. We also have Aboriginal representation on our board of directors as well. Um, to provide that that input and that um, and that sound advice. <clears throat> Before uh, moving forward, um, uh, Richard, maybe is, are there any questions out there that uh, that I can help uh, answer? Well, I see a few in the questions box. If you want to go ahead and uh, look in your box and uh, answer a few of them. <clears throat> okay. Um, why did you choose a logo that is so similar to FSCs? <laughs> I don't know um, what FSCs look like. Yeah, I don't have a picture of that up on the screen. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one. I, I believe they they are different and, and separate. Um, uh, you know, the SFI logo was created um, back in uh, in in the late '90s, and so um, uh, I, I I don't know how to answer that one. Is, is I believe that that they are separate. Um, the, the claims are different on, on the two labels as well. Two years ago, Seattle published pictures of clear-cut uh, mountains um, on certified lands. Does clear-cutting show sustainable practice? Um, those uh, those clear-cuts were on, um, on some lands, but those clear-cuts were not a result of the SFI standard. Those clear the the water um, uh, shed and the and the and the runoff from that mountain were caused by a hundred-year storm. It doesn't matter what certification standard was managed to to those lands. Um, that would have happened if those lands were managed to FSC. And so, making the argument that because of SFI, these uh, water slides uh, and these um, and these. Um, uh, in, the, in these um, uh, uh, huge um, uh, slides happen because of SFI is not accurate information. In fact, um, uh, uh, that, that same thing could have happened if those lands were, were FSC certified. Um, having audio problems. And that was, so, that's been um, taken care of. Hopefully that's been resolved. Yeah. All right. So I will go ahead and move on. <clears throat> So the number one question that, that I get um, from organizations um, is what are the similarities and differences between SFI and FSC? And we do have information on our website um, that, uh, that goes through, um, we believe are the key attributes to look at these um, forest certification issues. Um, how are the programs governed? Where are the scope of the programs? What are the requirements in forest management certification? How do these programs both address chain of custody? And then what do these programs do for addressing that non-certified fiber in the supply chain as well? And so <clears throat> we, uh, we, we have a document on our website. Um, and if you go to our website, sfiprogram.org, you can view this in detail um, on, on how we um, both address these key, these key similarities and differences. I'd say, though, that one of the, the biggest um, uh, things that I've seen over the 11 years that I've been with SFI is that there are more similarities and differences these days between the programs. Um, we've seen competition between the programs grow certification as a whole and improve for certification as a whole. No question about it, without FSC pushing SFI, we wouldn't be where we are today and I'd say the same is true with FSC. Without SFI pushing FSC, FSC wouldn't be where they are today. And so we have seen competition uh, grow and enhance both these programs. I'd also use the analogy that it's kind of like um, uh, with world hunger. There's a lot of different organizations that are that are looking at at how to um, uh, end end hunger. 
and they may approach it different ways, but the result is they all care about the same issue. That's how it is with, with forest certification as well. Uh, we may approach different issues um, different ways, but the end result is we, are, we all care about ensuring that, that forests are being managed in a responsible way. <clears throat> Another uh, key issue um, that, that folks may not be aware of, aware of that, that I get a lot of questions about is, um, is FSC the gold standard? And um, <clears throat> I get this question quite a bit, and, and how I like to um, tell, talk to people about it is, um, early on, I, I talked about umbrella organizations of, of FSC and PESC, and, and how both these organizations um, look at these issues um, uh, 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 and, and really what they do is they set criteria and then they endorse regional or national standards. FSC operates that way where they endorse regional or national standards. Uh, they have 28 different standards that they've endorsed across, across the globe. Um, but at the same time, all these standards, they have different requirements. And so when you talk about FSC as the gold standard, it's important to know that there's 28 different standards out there. And so a company that operates in Maine may be held to a different requirement and a different standard for a company that operates just across the border in the Maritimes of Canada. Even though it's the same forest type, it just is different standards. It's the Maritimes of Canada FSC standard compared to the Northeast FSC standard of the U.S. And so, um, so it, it, it's possible um, uh, folks don't always understand those nuances when it comes to FSC being labeled as the gold standard. Um, how how that, that, that really plays out in the marketplace. Some of the hot button forestry themes um, that uh, that I, I get asked a, a lot about is is and, and again this is covered in that fact sheet um, that I mentioned uh, two slides ago that's on our website sfiprogram.org. Um, how we uh, look at biodiversity, how we look at chemical use, how we address. Um, issues of plantation management and forest conversion and indigenous rights, how we look at clear-cutting requirements within, um, within our standards. Um, and, and all of these issues, they, they are addressed um, within both the, the programs. Um, in, uh, in the Pacific Northwest of, of, uh, of the U.S., FSC has strong requirements on clear-cutting restrictions, but the Boreal Standard of Canada doesn't have any restrictions on clear-cutting. Um, SFI, we limit clear cuts to 120 acres or less. And so, so there, there are nuances and differences between standards, and it's important to know that, that the programs address these key hot-button issues um, that, that often get asked, but, but they may vary um, just depending on, on which FSC standard um, you may be reviewing or, or looking at. <clears throat> so moving on to green building. Um, SFI, we do support green building uh, because of, um, of, of our, the politics that has happened with the USGBC over the last seven, eight years. Um, a lot of people don't believe that, that we support the concepts of green building, and, and absolutely we support green building. We encourage and, and, and uh, architects and builders to, to use wood products. We believe it's the um, most sustainable um, building material out there. Um, but we also believe forest certification can offer that additional proof point um, that that wood is coming from a responsible forest, responsibly managed forest. There are a lot of green building rating tools out there that do recognize the role of multiple forest certification standards. So whether it's Built Green, in Can uh, Built green Canada or Green Globes for Commercial Construction here in the U.S. or the National Green Building Standard uh, for Residential Construction here in the U.S., or the newly adopted um, International Green Construction Code. These are all programs and tools and standards that, that recognize the value of SFI as, as, as well as FSC and the other standards out there. So we are currently um, moving on now to USGBC and LEED 2012. Um, for those who, who don't know, we are uh, in a um, comment period for draft four now. Of, um, of LEED 2012. It, it opened last Friday and it goes um, um, until Memorial Day. Um, then the voting period starts on June 1st um, and that will uh, last a month and then the final LEED rating tools will be released uh, this fall. So looking specifically at draft four 
and how they, and I have a typo there, I, I apologize, but looking specifically at draft four um, uh, and how they look at forest certification, um, <clears throat> they uh, say within the standard uh, of draft four that it must be Forest Stewardship Council or USGDC approved equivalent is how they, they look at that issue. And that issue of, uh, of forest certification falls within a larger credit now and for those who aren't familiar with the last couple iterations of LEED 2012, they've taken out that forest certification credit, that I believe is MR Credit 7 um, within uh, the, the old LEED documents, and they've replaced it now with this new credit called the Responsible Extraction Credit. And the purpose and intent of this credit is so it's applicable to any building material or product um, uh, that that is extracted um, um, from from the earth, and so it's broken out into three different material types: mined or quarry materials, bio-based materials, or other extracted materials. And there's different requirements depending on what type of material um, you you have. And so there's different requirements for mined and quarry, different for bio-based, and different for other extracted. Um, within bio-based is where you see the language on Forest Stewardship Council or equivalent or USGBC approved equivalent. And so um, so within that responsible extraction credit is where you see the forest certification um, uh, stance within these LEED 2012 uh, uh, documents. So um, here, here is the exact language. New wood products must be certified by the Forest Stewardship Council or USGBC approved equivalent. And this is great. We believe this is the best the language has been because now supposedly there will be a defined um, process for how USGBC is going to um, decide what is equivalent. For the past however many years USGBC has been in existence, they have never defined why Forest Stewardship Council is the only certification standard that is part of the lead rating tools. And so this now will hopefully have a process to show, um, okay, these are the key, the key indicators that are important for USGBC to show equivalence. However, within draft four that was just released on Friday, they still haven't defined what that process is publicly. And so there's still key questions that we still need answers to on, on what that criteria is going to be. Who's going to conduct the assessment? How long is that assessment going to take to, to conduct? We've been uh, looking at this issue for, for eight years now, and so we, we want it to be resolved in a timely manner. Who determines what that criteria is uh, to determine equivalence? And so, um, so these are some of the, the key questions that we still need answered from USGBC um, to, to really uh, um, uh, uh, move that path forward um, for, uh, for addressing this specific issue. <clears throat> this just shows the, uh, there are a number of, of credits um, within the different lead rating tools um, that address for certification, whether in the building design and construction, existing buildings operation and maintenance, look at it from a paper perspective, and lead for homes, um, obviously uh, addresses this issue as well. There has been a lot of um, support out there um, <clears throat> looking at this issue of, um, of acceptance of all credible forest certification standards, including the SFI program. We've heard from, um, from many people on our blog, goodforforest.com, whether it's academia or, or conservation groups or labor organizations or aboriginals or family forest landowners or auditors, certification bodies, um, that, that are looking at this issue of, of why SFI should be recognized within the USGBC lead rating tool. We've also heard from governors out there as well. Fourteen governors have written letters to USGBC um, uh, uh, urging them to, to recognize the value of, of all forest certification standards, including SFI and the American Tree Farm System. We even saw a state, um, uh, a governor, Paula Page, last year who signed an executive order, which is probably the, the strongest um, statement made so far, where <coughs> he basically said, that any new or expanded state building needs to incorporate 
a green building tool that gives certification credits um, uh, equal recognition um, that are, uh, and, and so basically what this is saying is programs that don't recognize multiple forest certification standards won't be used in any new um, uh, building um, uh, under the, uh, the state of Maine. So coming back um, to this slide, um, uh, at SFI, we, we are recognizing a variety of, of green building um, tools out there, whether it is the IGCC or National Home Building Standard or Bismuth Furniture Standard. Um, we, we have seen growing support for, uh, for rating tools that, that do recognize the value of, of all these um, programs. <clears throat> We're also getting the word out um, uh, through CEUs, Continuing Education Unit, through McGraw-Hill. In February, um, we, we did a CEU. Over 19,000 people have viewed it. Um, almost 460, uh, over 460 people have taken the test online. If you haven't seen this yet, I encourage you to, to do so. As this um, has much of the information that I'm presenting today as well. So what are some of those unintended consequences of preferences? Well, I, I spoke early on, three quarters of, of all the certified forests out there um, are to other standards um, other than just um, uh, FSC. And so by only recognizing one, you're not recognizing the value of all these other credible systems. Um, if you look at, at FSC on a global perspective, about 10% of, um, of FSC certifications are in the U.S. The, re the remainder is, is outside of the U.S., and so this could mean that by giving a preference for FSC, it could mean that um, to meet that demand, um, suppliers will have to source from Russia or Brazil or China or outside of the U.S. to help meet this, uh, this demand. And so by supporting SFI, you're supporting those, uh, those jobs in those communities in the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> um, bringing back the alphabet soup slide. Um, again, YCS to SFI, it, it is about supporting those domestic jobs that fiber those communities. SFI, we, we are a North American standard. It is about supporting that conservation work and research and the longer education that I talked about. You avoid that risk of, of buying a legally logged um, fiber because SFI, we only certify forests in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, and so we, we, we have um, these, uh, these strong requirements in place. So to get more information, um, I, I spoke uh, about some of these key topics already, independence and inclusion, the rigor of third-party audits, understanding equal labels. Um, you can go to our website, sfiprogram.org backslash facts, to get more information from these experts on, um, on these key issues that, that are commonly asked uh, of us. I also do want to uh, mention that we have our annual conference every year, and, um, and this year we'll be in Milwaukee. And so for anyone that's interested, there's information on our website. But I do want to uh, pitch that to you as well. And then finally, here's my contact information for any questions that, uh, that you have that we can't get to today. And, um, and with that, I will, um, I will pause and see if there's any other questions. Good. And Richard, I realized that uh, slides I had on, on the on-product label, I, I took out. Um, I usually have that in my deck. And so um, to go back to that original question that you had about on-product labels, the SFI program does have on-product labels. Um, there's claims associated with each of our labels so that end users can, be, um, can have more information on what that label represents. Our website is, is also on, um, on each of our labels. Uh, which, uh, which there's information on our website and with even more information um, to, to help uh, end users, consumers on, on what the SFI labels represent. But um, uh, certified companies, they're, they're using it on, um, on all sorts of, 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 of things, uh, whether it's in tags or, or wrap or actually on the product itself. Um, it, it, it all varies, but, uh, but it is being used. Very good. Um, good timing. You, you finished uh, right on time. Uh, I have a few questions, and then uh, we'll turn to Rob and see if there's any questions from the audience. Uh, my first question is a, it's a short stor story regarding availability of uh, certified wood products. Uh, I had, uh, as a lead consultant, I had a project that required certified white cedar siding. 
and that's very difficult to come by in FSC. So this, the cedar siding being high visibility, uh, we are faced with um, turning to the open market and possibly getting cedar that from a clear cut or turning to another certification system, and that's where we turn to FI, who has a uh, greater certified forest area, and we're able to find that product. And my other question has to do with uh, the mechanics of chain of custody. Um, being a lead consultant, again, I'm very familiar with how it works with the FSC. Uh, the vendor must note on their vendor invoice that it's FSC. How, how does the chain of custody follow through for SFI? I mean, how does the consumer or the contractor, in, in my case, know that they're actually buying SFI? Right, and, and uh, that could fall um, two different places. Um, it could be on the on-product label itself, um, which is one designation. That, that won't help because uh, as uh, for lead um, documentation, or well, at least for paper documentation, you need to see something in writing. Doesn't right, and, and I would say the other place is on invoices. Um, it, it will show up on invoices as well. Okay, so on the invoice, it, it actually... Uh, uh, certified the SFI product. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Rob, uh, are there any questions for the audience? Uh, yes, we actually did have a, a question from Joseph Lyman. Um, he was wondering who was the Green Furniture Association? Oh, it was um, BISMA. Um, uh, ooh, I, and I, I can't think of the acronym. Um, off the top of my head, but it's a E-level um, uh, certification standard. It's an ANSI-approved um, standard, and within that uh, that furniture standard, um, they they talk about material use and um, and say that um, that it, the products need to be um, chain of custody, third party certified, um, and and so and then they have to declare what certification standard that they use. Um, but they recognize um, SFI, FSC, PEFC within, um, within that, uh, that standard. All right, wonderful. And th that was actually um, all the questions I currently see. So, so thank you. This okay. has been great. Okay, I believe we answered the questions on the um, sidebar. Those were all answered? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. And, um, yep, and so if there's a... Any other um, uh, questions um, afterwards that uh, that that you think of? Um, uh, feel free to to drop me an email or give me a call. Yeah, and I'm checking the box, and I don't see any others. So uh, unless we get any others that come in the next minute, um, are there any closing remarks you want to make? Um, that just. Check out our website for more information. Um, if you're not part of the lead review process, I would encourage you to get engaged and, and look at these issues as well as, as it relates to forest certification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let me ask you this with, with the lead uh, 2012 uh, under the final review here. Uh, how, does, how do you plan on getting those answers? What can one do to get answers uh, for uh, questions that they may have on uh, lead 2012? Uh, well, um, I think you make comments, but w what can you do beyond that? Right. Um, it's uh, for for those that that are that know um, architects or builders in in your community that may be a part of uh, local chapters. It's, it's getting engaged there and and talking about um, these key issues and and why. Um, it's important to recognize SFI as well as other four certification standards within uh, LEED 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, I guess we're, we're going to adjourn early today since there's no more questions. Uh, if other questions do come up in the interim, uh, please email or call Jason Medic at the number he provided here in the last slide. And with that, uh, we'll close uh, today's webinar, and I thank you, Jason, for the presentation. It was very Great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Richard. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you, and thanks, Rob.